Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is Instructor Joy. Today we are going to talk about intonation. Intonation is something that constantly challenges us. No matter what level we are in, it's always one of those that can be quite tricky. So I thought I'll show you the eight common mistakes that I see in my teaching studio and I hope that can help you to guide and then knowing what to avoid and what to pay attention to so that you can improve your intonation. I will be posting um, intonation improving exercises in my Patreon page this coming Thursday. Um, you can find my Patreon page in the description below. And, and also thank you very much for your continued support here and also in my Patreon page. And I truly appreciate for your kind comments, questions and emails as well. So when it comes to intonation, of course we want to play in tune, but sometimes we don't know what to how to improve it, how to make our notes in tune. So I'm going to break it down to the technical aspects that you can pay attention to and also you can correct yourself. First common mistake, not spending enough time to tune your violin properly. It's a very basic. We would think we would spend enough time to make it in tune. So, so make sure that your violin is in tune to start with. Um, but I find it, especially at the exam or at the performance, um, a lot of violinists, they, they worked so hard, they prepared so well, and then but on the day of audition or on the day of performance, we're a little nervous, we're on the stage, so we feel like everybody's watching, so we just want to tune it quickly and then just move on. Let them wait. It's not worth starting on the wrong note, <laughs> literally. So just take enough time to tune it. If you feel like a little um, uncomfortable, just tune it a little gently, softly, instead of very, very loud, some do, which is better than starting out of tune violin. But try to tune it a little quietly, but take enough time until your violin is properly tuned. Second mistake that I see is our wrist being bent. This happens a lot, especially um, for violinists who are somewhat new or a beginner to the intermediate violinist. So now we have to keep our wrist somewhat straight, not relaxed way, not stiff straight, but in a relaxed way, under the violin, right, like this. But one of the common mistakes that I see is a lot of people, not a lot, but some, bend their wrist like that and hold the violin. It may feel like we have more control of the fingertip. But what we actually are doing is we're using only finger muscle to put the fingers on, which is we're dismissing the complete support of the arm. And then the finger gets tired and then also we have less control over when it comes to extending the fingers. Make sure your wrist is nice and straight so that your left hand is properly positioned. So that especially when you reach the fourth finger, you're going to need a lot of support of your arm and the wrist. In order to do that, you need to keep your wrist somewhat straight, not bend like this. That was common mistake number two. Common mistake number three. Make sure don't, not to squeeze the neck too much. Especially when we're somewhat new or some of us have, have been playing like that with this kind of bad habit and it's really hard to undo. But still it's worth to shake off the bad habits and or relearn it. So the problem with squeezing the neck between our thumb and index finger is by doing that, we're already creating a lot of tension um, near the thumb and index finger. What it, it actually ha kind of handicaps our hand, therefore we're going to have a hard time to stretch pinky and third finger. So that's simply the physically where, where it tends that, like that, it's a little hard. So, or also make sure you're not completely holding the violin between your thumb and index finger here and that you're actually blocking yourself from being able to vibrate freely or shift. In order to shift to, um, freely, you have to make sure you're not completely touching the neck with your entire hand. You need to make sure you have a little room between your left hand and the neck for relaxed vibrato and shifting, as well as being able to play in tune. Yeah, that was common mistake number three. Common mistake number four. Fingers being too far away from the fingerboard, meaning in order to be able to control it, or some of control it in the faster, it's important for us to keep fingers near the string. But sometimes we're very focused and we put one finger from far away, yeah? 
not, not only it's from far away, it takes time, but it also takes much more effort. Therefore, again, it makes our left hand uh, tense. Therefore, it's harder to control. It all boils down. Keeping our left hand with a minimum effort, therefore, we can control the way we like it. Yeah? Make sure the left hand position is nicely close. A nice guideline would be make sure that all the four fingers are lined same as a string, not far away like that. Yeah? You may be in tune with the first and second finger, but when it comes to third and fourth finger, it's going to be hard. So make sure you turn your hand a bit towards the pinky so that your fingers are lined as a string line. Yeah? All right. Now, let's see. Number five, common mis mistakes. Now, when, it, when we shift from lower position to the higher positions, common mistake that I see is we forget to turn our hand slightly to our right. So what's wrong with not turning, just moving our arm towards, towards us, is there's a big body there. If we just keep sliding up like that, at some point we can stretch, but there's just so much that we can stretch. Not only we're limited, but also you can feel a lot of tension in your hand. Again, tension is one of the greatest enemy when it comes to being able to play in tune. So now sit, just remember your left hand position changes as you go higher from fifth number five, the fifth position onwards, the thumb goes under the neck and then allow, just allow our left hand to go around the body and in higher positions we even raise our left hand a little upwards to win a little more room. So remember to turn the, the left hand position changes and get slightly turned to your right as you get higher positions. Number six, the finger tipping too heavy. I mean it is good idea to develop the articulation of the fingertip. But remember, we all play out of tune here and there. Nobody plays 100% in tune. But the, the big difference between a um, player who can play in tune and the players who cannot play that much in tune is it, the people who can adjust fast enough to the audience ears, often it's more in tune. Which means we have to make sure the fingertip is light enough so that we can adjust. Let's say we play second finger too sharp, then we have to be able to adjust right away. But if your fingertip is too heavy, it takes longer to move our second finger to the proper position. And also, um, people heard the articulated left finger. So you want to make sure that the, the correct notes are most heard. In order to do that, your fingertip has to be super light. The way you can gauge whether your fingertip is light enough or not and sometimes just lift up take the weight of the fingertip until you hear a little whistling sound yeah this is a bit on the light side but from here you can apply just a tiny bit just to make sure that's a minimum of weight that way you can try to see if you can adjust it yeah that way if it's, it's out of tune if you happen to be out of tune you can correct it quick enough before anybody recognized it or heard it. Now, number seven, common mistake. When it comes to double stops, a lot of violinists have habit of building the double stops from the bottom note onwards. Meaning, let's say I'm playing third of F sharp and D. Um, a lot of violinists have like to build a finger, so start putting the third finger first because that's lower one, and the first finger. The problem with that is when we, when it comes to the double stops, we're using not we're using different types of intonation called just intonation, which means we're using one a firm note that's in tune and whatever it's filling harmony that could, could be top note or they could be bottom note depending on what kind of music you're um, working on. The filling note has to be adjusted either slightly higher, slightly lower, depending what kind of interval we're playing. But if we always build the, a double stop intonation from starting from bottom, then top. Now both notes may be in tune, but when I play together, that's not quite in tune. My first finger is a little sharp. So I have to, you know, if I take the third finger as a primary one, important one, then I have to adjust the upper intonation by making slightly lower. Now I'm in tune. If I play separately, now 
my first finger sounds a little flat, but when I play it together, that's in harmony, which we call it just intonation. And then that can be, let's say, often, but not always, a melody is on top. So make sure make a habit of building the intonation when you're playing double stops from the melody onwards. So here, let's say melody is a top note. Then, then the bottom note, if I play alone, that's in tune, but if I play together, that's not quite in tune. I have to adjust the third finger. I need to make a bit higher towards me. It was a tiny bit adjusted, but still makes huge difference when it comes to playing in tune. Yeah? Last common mistake that I see when it comes to intonation is especially when we've been playing a lot for a specific record, we've been playing many, many times, many months, many years, and we know this piece very well, and then we've been playing in tempo, in performance tempo so much, and then we forgot to listen each note. Let's say we're playing something. We've been playing that one so much. We're just focusing, having fast fingers, but um, we forgot to listen every note. So we have to be careful. In that case, it's worth to break down into separable and then listen to each note. And it's worth to spend time like that because sometimes it takes just five minutes with a wide open ears, really listening carefully to every single note. And then the result will be a significant improvement when it comes to intonation. Yeah? I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and Happy Indian playing! Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.